Lesson 7-4, Similarity in Right Triangles. So we talked about similarity in previous lessons, side, side, side similarity, side, angle, side similarity, and then angle, angle similarity. That works for all triangles, but this lesson is specifically talking about right triangles. So it says, suppose you take a rectangular piece of paper and you cut it into three right triangles, like the visual says. How can you compare the leg lengths and the angle measures. So think about that. If you cut those apart and put them all together next to each other, or how would they line up? How would they compare? And are the triangles going to be similar? Example one, identify similar triangles formed by the altitude. You need to know what an altitude is. So let's look at this solution. It says, when you draw an altitude of, uh, to the hypotenuse of a right triangle, you create three right triangles. Here it says, the altitude CD uh, this is the altitude or the height of the right triangle connecting to the, from the right angle to the hypotenuse. And then it shows you these three broken up triangles. So if I had my pen here and I highlighted these, this blue triangle right here, that small one, is just drawn out that side. And then this green one right here is broken up and drawn right over there. So it's just showing, showing you the small, which is the blue, the medium, which is the green, and then the big one that when they were all together, that large one. So there's gonna be three similar triangles, all from drawing the altitude of a right triangle. I kind of just spoiled it because it says, how are the triangles related? And I just told you that they are going to be similar, but let me draw them separately. So I'm going to draw all three triangles and this is what I'd recommend every single time. So I'm going to draw a right triangle. Okay. And there's always going to be a longer side and a smaller side. And then I'm going to draw another right triangle, a little bit bigger, facing the same direction with that vertical line, the longest. And then I'm going to draw another triangle same direction with that vertical angle or vertical line as the longest. And all of these are right triangles, even though my lines aren't straight. And they represent the three triangles in this figure. So if I wanted to, I could label this A, D, and C, that smallest triangle. And the medium triangle, this right angle is D. The short end ends up at C, and that far away vertex is B, race. The largest triangle is C, A, and B. If you get used to drawing all three of those triangles, small, medium, and large, right next to each other, your math will become a lot easier because you'll be able to see where the corresponding parts are. So that's what I recommend every time. Theorem 7-4 states exactly what I just said, all three of those triangles. If it is an altitude or the height going from the right angle to the hypotenuse, then all three triangles will be similar. Example two, we're gonna do this exact same thing I just drew out for you, but we're going to do this with actual math involved. So I'm gonna take these triangles and I'm not gonna make anything special and my lines might not be even straight, but we're gonna go with it. So here's my three, small, medium, and large. Yikes, that's an ugly one. Right triangles, right triangles, each of them. And I'm going to label without even worried about what I'm trying to solve. I'm just going to label using the actual points. So I've got this point S, R, and Q. So I'm visualizing from this original big picture, breaking it down into three separate smaller pictures. So right angle of the medium is S, short side reaches to Q, long side reaches to P. And then I'm going to do the right angle. And this is the original, the largest of the triangles. So that largest right angle is at Q. The shortest side reaches over to R. And the longer side goes all the way up to P. Now I'm going to measure the lengths. And on the largest triangle, often that's the easiest to label. So I go QR is 15. PQ is 20. And I'm literally reading these straight off this picture. Okay, off this visual. That's all I have right now. And then I'm going to go to the medium triangle. Looking at this medium triangle, what do I have? I don't have SQ. Oh, I have PQ. That's 20 as well. Um, and I don't have anything else on the medium. Now I'm going to go to the small triangle. I have the hypotenuse. It's 15. SR is 9. And I kind of like, okay, now what? So now I'm going to look at the question and I need to know what QS is. 
QS. Now, if I'm looking at this visual, QS shows up in a couple different places on the visual, but really it's only this side right here, SQS or SQ, and this side right here, QS. Okay. Now, to be honest, you could do this by using the smallest triangle and using Pythagorean theorem to solve for this X right here. We'll just make it an X. Or, and this is what I recommend because that's what you want to do in this lesson, you label this side X in the medium triangle and we're going to create a proportion comparing the two. We are going to set up the proportion. I am going to take the small triangle to the big triangle. And I re reminded you in a different lesson that you can have the proportion set up base to height, height to hypotenuse, base to hypotenuse, big to small, small to big. Anyway, just be consistent. We're going to do small to big, meaning the small triangle, and I'll put a big S, and a the big triangle, in this case, just happens to be the medium triangle, but we're going to compare those. So small triangle, I'm going to say nine corresponds with X because this nine literally is in the same or corresponding spot as the X. And then I'll say 15 from the small triangle corresponds with the 20 because they're in the corresponding parts. Once you have this proportion comparing them, hopefully you know to cross multiply. So I'm going to give you a little bit, try to figure that out. Pause the video if you need to. And we're going to work this out. We have 9 times 20 equals 15x. I need to calculate 9 times 20. That is 180 15x. Divide both sides by 15. See what you get. You should have gotten x equals 12. Now, if you didn't get x equals 12 or you set up your proportions wrong or incorrectly, what you could do to double check is use this small triangle again. Remember I said you could use Pythagorean theorem? Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I'm going to say the 9 is a. The x is b. And then the 15 squared would be c squared. When you do this math, you will actually come out with 12 as your x. The second part of this is the triad. Write a proportion that you can use to solve. It doesn't say to solve it in this first part. It just says set up the proportion. In the part B, you are going to actually solve. Let me help you set that up. Draw your three triangles. Small, medium, and large. Label the sides. I always do the right angle too to make sure you understand where it is. So small triangle, S, R, Q. Medium triangle, S, Q, P. And the largest triangle, Q, R, P, up here. When you solve, double check your dimensions. So make sure you're labeling them in the correct space. P, Q is 20. Q, R is 15. And this does look very similar to the previous problem. It could be the exact same picture. And RS, which is over here, is 9. So let's see what else we have. SQ, we don't have any information on SQ. QR, we have is 15. PQ, we have as 20. So yeah, this does look like the same. So you are going to set this up, how to solve for PS. So let's find that. Where is that PS? So we have. PS right here, and it doesn't look like we have PS anywhere else. So this X is the only place we have it. So you can use the medium triangle compared to the large triangle, maybe if you work some Pythagorean theorem first. Or you could do the medium triangle compared to the smallest triangle. The reason why I said maybe is because you have a 20 right here. 
you would need some information in the hypotenuse to have corresponding parts. You do have a 15 in the smallest triangle. So I would compare that 15 and the 20 and then compare this X with the other version of the small triangle over here. Now we're still in that same boat. That is not X. Kind of like this right here is not X. We're not, we don't have that. So you are literally going to have to use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for this Y on the big triangle or use the Pythagorean theorem to solve, we'll call that Z in this small triangle. But you can set up the proportion and solve from there. Example three. This problem asks us to find CD, but it doesn't give very much information. I'm going to write this out in my three triangles. The book does it a little bit differently, and it gives you um, a formula and a rule. And I know pretty soon it will give us a theorem or corollary, but I'm going to show you how to do this the same way we've been doing it so that you don't have to learn one more rule, that it will work always. So let's look at this. My small triangle, D, B, C, my medium triangle, D, C, A, and the largest triangle, C, B, A. I'm missing a lot of information. Let's write down whatever we have. I have the smallest triangle, D, B, is 3.6. The medium triangle um, right here, AD, is 6.4. I don't have DC, this height. I also don't have this base. Notice I marked them the same way. They are both DC. So this base on the medium and this height on the small are both the same. They're both the distance DC, which is ironically what we're looking for, this line right here on this main triangle. So to do this, this is what I would do. I would con continue to do the same thing. Small triangle compared to big triangle, small triangle compared to big triangle, and write out your proportions. So X over 6.4 should equal 3.6 over x. We haven't done a problem like this, but the rules still apply. We're still going to cross multiply. We'll just get an x squared. So you're going to have x squared equals 6.4 times 3.6. Grab that calculator, figure out what that is, and then take the square root, and you will get what cd equals. Here's another one, example three, the try it. I'm going to rewrite those. Now, for those of you who do not need to rewrite them, don't. You don't need to. Most kids need to, to be able to get these right, though. If you don't need to, just look at the problems. You can solve it. You can use the geometric mean rule in the previous problem. This way is just more visual and more kids are able to solve. D, A, C, medium triangle. Start with those right angles. D, use the short side and then go to the top. This should be B. The largest triangle is C, A, B. I have the short triangle information. It looks like I have AD is five. The medium triangle DB is 15. I'm looking for CD and I happen to have CD on both the small and the large triangle. This setup is going to be the same as we were just doing. I'm going to slide down a little bit on this to give us a little bit free space, actually. And I'm going to write above it just because I have space. I'm going to say x squared, or sorry, x over 15 equals 5 over x. Those corresponding parts, small triangle compared to big triangle, small triangle compared to big triangle, and this is just getting you in that habit of visualizing and seeing where it is, no matter whether you're trying to find the geometric mean or any other side link. Cross multiply, that's where the x squared comes in that I said. 15 times five, multiply 15 by five, take the square root and you will get CD. This is the corollary that I was just talking about. It shows you how to find the geometric mean, this altitude or that geometric mean. You can do it this way, memorizing this formula or understanding the two parts and setting them up. Or you can do it the way I showed with the three triangles, small, medium, and large, and calculating and visualizing, whichever way you prefer. 
Here's another one. Given this, can you find RT? Notice we're not looking for this geometric mean. We're looking for another side. So you can use the geometric mean rule, the corollary, or you can do the method I used, and both of them will work. You just might need some more steps. I'm going to do those triangles again. The more we do these, the better you'll get. Medium, large, and maybe the better I'll get at drawing them because my drawings do not get much better. Sorry. U, S, T. There's that right angle. Medium triangle, U, T, R. And the large triangle, T, S, R. Let's label everything we know. The more you know, the better off you'll be, but sometimes you don't know that much. 5.4. U, R is 9.6. And R, S. This entire length, and I'm going to put them right next to each other. You can figure them out. 9.6 and 5.4 together would be that total hypotenuse. So let's look at this. If we are looking for RT, the only other place RT is, is right here and right here. We can call both of those X's. Looking at this, I'm hoping you can tell that the medium and the large triangles have corresponding parts that can work. So the height of the medium, 9.6, compared to the height of the big, so small to big. The hypotenuse of the smaller, the hypotenuse of the larger, and you can set it up. I'll leave this as it is right now. So I'll go 9.6 over x should equal x over, and I'll just write 9.6 plus 5.4, just so you can see where I got those pieces. Okay, take a second, try to figure it out before I do. Okay, if you didn't have enough time, go ahead and pause the video. When I multiply these, I'm going to use a parenthesis around this bottom part just so I do this first to make sure that's a grouping in the denominator. I have 9.6, and when I actually figure this out, it's 15. 9.6 plus 5.4 is 15. Equals that x squared. If I multiply 15 times 9.6, you should get 144. That's my x squared, but you don't need x squared. You need x square root both sides and x should equal 12. Here's the other corollary. Again, it's something to memorize or to understand. So I understand it by the visualing, all three triangles. If that doesn't work for you, you can learn these formulas. If you're ever looking for this right side, this is how you do it, That's that shorter leg. If you're looking for the longer, this blue side, this is how you do it. All related to that geometric mean or solving for the altitude. So here's another problem involving some variables. Set it up the same way. Let me draw it out. Since there are variables, I'm going to give ourselves some a little bit more space in between the triangles. Okay. All three are right triangles. There are no labels, so I can label A, B, C, and I can just call this D right here. And you can do that for any triangle that you have, any problem. Just label them if it makes it easier. For the small triangle, D, B, A. Medium triangle, D, A, C. And the largest triangle, A, B, C. Even though they weren't labeled before, I have them labeled now. And now I'm going to go through and label all of the measurements. And use a different color just so they don't get all blurred together. Smallest triangle, I've got 6, I've got y, and I've got x. Medium triangle, it looks like I have x plus 5 right here. And the hypotenuse is z, and the base is 6. So you might need to visualize it's like just rotated around. And the largest triangle, y, the height is z. And then the hypotenuse, be careful, it's x plus 5 plus that other x. So if you want, you can say 2x plus 5. And then just get rid of this. 
we're going to start. Now, sometimes when you're doing a problem like this, you actually cannot tell which variable is easier to solve right at the beginning. So just look at it, see if it helps. Let's see. Let's compare smaller to medium just to see because I don't know yet. So the smaller triangles, I've got an X and Y. The medium, I do have an X and a Z. Oh, but I see something. And hopefully you see this too. And you can honestly choose it in a different direction depending on the problem. Here is the small triangle compared to the medium triangle. Small triangle compared to the medium triangle. My only variable is an X. So I can do this. I don't want to have a problem where there's multiple different variables. So set it up. 6 compared to X plus 5 equals X over 6. Cross multiply those things. And when you do this, this might be a little bit complicated. You're maybe going to have to use some factoring. So let me work it out with you. I wasn't going to, but let's do it. So if I cross multiplied, I'm going to move this right over here because I'm running out of space. I would have 6 times 6 equals x times x plus 5. 36 equals, and I'm going to distribute this x, x squared plus 5x. And to solve for x, you are going to factor. So I'm going to move the 36 to the other side and set it equal to 0. Also running out of space, let me erase this just a second. I wish we had more space in here, but we don't. So I had to erase that. And I'm going to take this part of the problem right here, and I'm going to go way up here, totally out of order. It's going to make you crazy. So I have 0 equals x squared plus 5x minus 36. If you can't remember how to factor this, you could use the quadratic formula. But I need a, two factors of negative 36 that multiply together and still get me a 5 when they add together. So take a second and think of that. Have you thought of them yet? I know the factors of negative 36. And I can write them if you're not sure. So negative 36, I'm just doing some scratch work. I know 1 and 36 is a factor. I know 2 and 18 are factors. I know that 4 and 9 six and six. You may list all the factors. You may not, depending on the on the um, number. But right now, I look at these and I'm like, okay, is there any combination of a negative and a positive number of these factors that would give me a five? And I look, four and nine can make five. So it has to be a negative 36. So I say x plus nine, because when I add them together, they have to be a positive. And then x minus four equals zero. And this is a huge flashback to algebra one. So if this does not sound familiar or you are totally lost, we need to let your teacher know, you need to let your teacher know that you need help with factoring. And to be honest, a lot of kids probably have forgotten. So I set each of these factors, x plus nine equals zero or x minus four equals zero. And when you solve for the x's, you get x equals four. Or if I subtract 9 on both sides, x equals negative 9. You can't have a negative distance. It's not going to be that. So it's x equals 4. And that was a lot of math to get to that one variable. If this problem asks you to find the x, the y, and the z, it's going to take some time. So give yourself some time to find all of those. Example six is an application problem. Zang, Zang is constructing a four foot high loading ramp. It gives you a visual of it right here. The length of the back of the base is 12.8. So the back of the base, how long must the entire base be? Draw those triangles, let's get going. Here we go again. And at this point you're like, oh man, more triangles? You do not have to do these if you can get the questions right. But I've told you before, most kids can't. So drawing them out might be the only way. And when you visualize them, hopefully you'll do great. Largest triangle, A, D, B. Medium triangle, C, A, B. And the small triangle is C, D, A. I've got them all labeled. I'm going to label them with measurements. 
It looks like I'm just going to call this F for the front of the small triangle. The height is 4. I'm going to go to the medium triangle. I have this small side as 4. That's CA. I have the, I'm going to call this the back with a capital B. And then I have the ramp, which I don't know, I'll call R, which is also the long side of the largest triangle, R. That A to B is called R, the ramp. So I'm going to call this ramp. I'm going to call this B. I'm going to call this F. And the base, I'm just going to call X. I'm running out of variables that, I, that make sense. So the base is this X right here. It says, how long must the entire base be? So I'm looking for X. It says the, the entire base, the length of the back of the base must be 12.8. And I missed that. So these capital Bs aren't even going to be there. Let's get rid of them. Capital B, get rid of them. We already know that is 12.8, which makes our life a little bit easier. And once I have 12.8, I look at the 4, 12.8, F, 4. Set up those proportions. 4 goes with 12.8, and F goes with 4. Cross, multiply. Take a second, try to figure that out. 4.4, .4, or 4 times 4, sorry, equals 12.8 F. Multiply the 4s together. And you get 16 equals 12.8 F. When you divide by 12.8 on both sides, you should get, and I'm going to put it over here because I'm running out of space again, F equals 1.25. So if the front equals 1.25 and the back equals 12.8, combine those both together to get how long the entire base should be. On the second part of the problem, it asks how long the ramp should be. If you already have your math there and you already have your triangles, then you're just looking for that last part and finding the ramp length. Concept summary. This wraps it all up. And again, I know I teach it different than what this textbook or what Envision uses, but I feel like this way with the three triangles really helps more people. So in words, the altitude of the hypotenuse of the right triangle divides into three similar triangles. So all three of them. So it's the small, the medium, and the large. The length of the altitude is the geometric mean. And the length of the legs can be determined as well using these formulas down here at the bottom. So bottom line is all three triangles when using the altitude of a right triangle are similar. I hope that helped.